Oh, man. Oh, Nelly. Oh, Nelly. I am back home. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Um, it's been a long day, and I just got here tonight, 7.45. I'll be live streaming uh, with uh, Rio Robinson talking about the Cowboys versus the Washington Commanders away. And... Um, I was talking to Brother Roz, you know, the statistician that's literally driving me crazy. And uh, while we were having a conversation about uh, the numbers, Tyler Smith did drop by two grades, two, two percentage grades, down to 67 from 69 um, this past week, but it's still doing great. Uh, Evan O'Neill, Evan Neal dropped down to like 43, so he's way ahead. And the Cowboys are actually looking pretty good at some of the things that they actually ended up doing. Uh, this off season. In fact, you could almost say every week they're looking better and better. So here's the thing. Two people, excuse me, one person has ever been rookie defensive player of the year and then followed it up by being defensive player of the year. And one of the odds on favorites to actually be defensive player of the year is Micah Parsons. Well, Micah Parsons just got another boost, um, unfortunately, because football, and I'm not, because uh, I know what somebody's going to do. I know what people are going to do. They're going to say, I'm applauding this to happen, and I'm not. I'm going by the realities of what football is. Football is a game of attrition. So right now, Joey Bosa is now going on IR and going to have surgery. His season is done. Joey Bosa is one of those ones that you look at that could have been a contender for MVP defensive um, because of the sack totals that he gets. So you can scratch him off the list. TJ Watt last year had an incredible year uh, tying the sack record. Um, may be back, but he is injured. You can probably say that at best he might be back in five or six weeks, but unless he can double up, you might be able to say, scratch him off the list. So far, Aaron Donald has been good, the Aaron Donald that we're used to, but not MVP just yet. That's not to say it's only three games in, but right now, he's behind, way behind. And then there's Miles Garrett, who is not seeming to have that season. Now, Miles Garrett says that he wants to be number one in the NFL countdown and everything else, thus far has not been there so looking at this micah parsons who has four sacks on the season four sacks um like 26 pressures already and is a guy who is literally demanding double and triple teams almost every play that people are now game planning for and saying stop that guy the only thing that will maybe hurt this well injury of course can hurt this but unfortunately, because Micah Parsons is so good, teams are basically saying, we're not going to let him beat us. And that was the approach for the Giants. Now, Micah didn't play every play because he had the flu, uh, did not practice last week, but it only had six pressures and no sacks. But you could see they were trying to make a point of saying, we're not going to let Micah Parsons beat us. And so he ended up not getting those sacks. Although I will say they held him a hell of a lot. And, and there have been calls in there that should have been made. And you know, Giants fans, you, you know in your heart that there was some bullshit calls in there. But be that as it may. Because teams are going to try and stop Micah Parsons, like we saw this past week, the other dogs are going to hunt. You saw Demarcus Lawrence have three sacks. Marcus Lawrence hasn't had more than six sacks since, uh, you know, his first really two good years where he had 14 and a half and I think uh, followed it up with nine or ten. He has not done that. I mean, basically six sacks in a year have been the best he's done. He had one year there was only three and a half. He got three, three. And you can definitely attribute those to the attention that's being paid to Micah Parsons. 
Dorrance Armstrong, who has currently three sacks, three sacks, and would have had a fourth had it not been for Kellen Joseph with the face mask on the wide receiver going out in the route. I, I'm not going to let that one slip. I'm, I'm not. Uh, okay. Dorrance Armstrong would have been tied with Micah Parsons with four sacks. Yeah. Dorrance Armstrong. And this is another one of those moves that when Stephen Jones said, you know, there's not a big drop off between or di big difference between Randy Gregory and Dorrance Armstrong. Well, Dorrance Armstrong is already halfway there to Randy Gregory's best sack season, which is six in three games. And so, again, that one you can de definitely attribute to Micah Parsons. Not only Micah Parsons, the scheme as well as the defensive lineman, because now here's the difference, too. We actually have the big men. The fat boys are back in the middle, and they're actually keeping the quarterback contained so those outside guys can hunt and end up getting the quarterback. But be that as all that may, Micah Parsons... In 19 games, was it 19? 20 games. No, 19 games. 19 games. Having 17 sacks is freaking insane. And even though he didn't get any this week, even though he didn't get any this week, here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy. Micah Parsons is still, right now, on pace. If he continues to play like he's playing, He's still on pace to get 22.7. Now, you can't get a .7. You can get a .5 or you can get a .0. But he's still on pace to actually tie the NFL sack record. Hmm. And you have to think, um, knowing that Tom Brady doesn't get sacked, knowing that you're playing guys like Carson Wentz twice and some of the other quarterbacks that are out there, uh, when you play uh, like uh, the Houston Texans and um, teams like that, that dog's going to hunt. And I don't care how many people you put on him. He's going to get there, especially when he doesn't have the flu. And so you have to believe that because Joey Bosa, because T.J. Watt are both injured, the odds got better for Micah Parsons to be Defensive Player of the Year. Whew. I'm tired, boss. I'm real tired. Um, let me make sure, though. Um, I, I forgot about this last night and this morning because I know that Kathy, uh, Karen, Karen Dugan, and I know uh, Primetime Phil, um, I know Dr. Phillip, that I know, and there's a lot of you down there that I don't know where you're from that are down there in Florida. Um, be safe. Thoughts and prayers to you guys. Hopefully this hurricane, when it hits, is not as bad as that they're, they're predicting and all that. Um, I'm really, really worried about you guys. And um, it's working its way. It's going to work its way up the coast. And they're calling for rain here, I think, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So we're going to have a wet weekend. So I may want to put the cushions away uh, before the game. So, yeah, we'll have a weather game again. Kind of crazy. Last weekend, the weather was great. The weekend before was great. The season opener rained, and now this one, it rains. It's almost like there's a black cloud coming to town. Okay. All right. I guess that's it for now. I'll see you guys later. Peace.